Section 10.4, Inscribed Angles. Uh, an inscribed angle is any angle where the vertex is on the circle. So if we look at our picture, angle ADB is an inscribed angle because the vertex D is on our circle. Each inscribed angle intercepts an arc. The intercepted arc of angle ADB would be arc AB. You can see that's the arc formed by the two non-vertex points of the arc or of the angle that's inscribed. The intercepted arc and the inscribed angle relate to each other. The measure of the angle is equal to half of the measure of the arc. So if arc AB was 24, then the angle would be 12 because the arc is twice as big as the angle. Uh, we can use that theorem to find measurements. If we know angle SRQ is 90 degrees, we can use that to find arc STQ. Um, so we know that SRQ is 90 degrees so the arc is going to be twice that, so it's going to be 180. Here, SRQ is 115. We know the arc, the intercepted arc, which would be STQ, is going to be twice as big as our angle. So that's going to be 230. And lastly, they may give us the arc and tell us to find the angle. So we know since the arc, TQ, is going to be twice as big as the inscribed angle, uh, then angle TQR is going to be 50 degrees. All right, if we are asked to find the measure of angle C, we know angle C is right here. It's created by the segment AC and CD. The two non-vertex points are A and D. So the arc intercepted is arc AD. If arc AD is 94 degrees, we know the measure of the inscribed angle needs to be half of the measure of the arc. So that's going to be 47, which is A. Find the measure of BC. So we look, arc BC is intercepted by angle A. Angle A is 48 degrees, so the arc has to be twice as big as the angle. Uh, 2 times 48 is going to give us 96. So our answer would be D. Multiple intercepted arcs theorem. If two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. In our picture, angle A is congruent to angle B because they both intercept the arc CD. If we look, they both, the two non-vertex points are both at C and D. Uh, we can prove this using our intercepted arc theorem. Uh, we know each of those angles is going to be half the measure of the arc. They're both half of the same arc, so they're going to be congruent to each other. All right, let's use that to find the measures of a few angles. We know that those two angles need to be congruent to each other, so 2x plus 12 is going to be equal to 4x. Um, combining like terms, 12 is going to equal 2x, x is going to equal 6. We can plug that back in to find the angles. So angle A is going to be... Uh, 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 12 is going to be 24. Or if we looked at angle B, 6 times 4 is going to be 24. We know those both have to be equal to each other, so that's good. And they both intercept arc DC. So Y is going to be twice the measure of the, the, inter, uh, the inscribed angle. So that's going to be 2 times 24, which is going to be 48. Find the measure of angle I. So we take a look at I. 
that intercepts arc GH. The other angle that they show there is angle J that also intercepts GH, so we know those two angles need to be equal to each other. So we can set 10x minus 1 equal to 8x plus 9. Combine like terms, we're going to get 2x is equal to 10. So x is going to equal 5. If x equals 5, we know angle I is going to equal 8 times 5 plus 9. Um, so the measure of angle I is going to be 49 degrees, which is going to be answer D. Inscribed right triangle theorem. A right triangle is inscribed in a circle if and only if the hypotenuse of the triangle is a diameter of the circle. And that makes sense. We know from our last lecture that uh, any semicircle is going to have an arc of 180 degrees because it's half of the whole circle. So if arc AB, which is our intercepted arc here, is 180 degrees, we know that the inscribed angle is going to be half of that, so the inscribed angle is going to be 90 degrees. That makes sense. We can use this to find the value of x and y. If we look at angle A, where our x is, that is an inscribed angle that intercepts a semicircle, so we know right away x is going to be 90. And then we can use that and the fact that a triangle is going to have 180 degrees in it to find y. We know y is going to be 180 minus the other two angles. So we're going to take off the 90 for x, the 40 for uh, angle D there, and that's going to give us 50 for y. Finding the measure of angle B. If we look, triangle ABC is a right triangle because C inscribes a semicircle. So we know that all of the angles need to add up to 180 degrees. But we know angle C is going to equal 90. And then we can substitute in the other two parts. We know A is going to be x plus 4. B is 8x minus 4. We plug those in. We can combine like terms. So 9x plus 90 is going to equal 180. Subtract off that 90. 9x is going to equal 90. We know x is going to equal 10. But we're not looking for x. We're looking to find the measure of angle B. So we plug that back in. 8 times 10 minus 4 is going to be 76. All right. Again, we can use the same type of thing to find the measure of angle D. We know in a triangle all of our angles are going to add up to 180. Uh, angle F is inscribed uh, inside of a semicircle. So we know it's going to be a right angle. So we know 2x plus 6 plus 8x plus 4 plus 90 is going to equal 180. We combine our like terms 10x plus 10 is going to equal 90, so 10x is going to equal 80, x is going to equal 8, but we're looking to find angle D, so we plug that back in, uh, 2 times 8 is going to be our 16, plus 6 is 22, so our answer is going to be C. The inscribed quadrilateral theorem. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if the opposite angles are supplementary. So in our case, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C is going to be 180. Same with B and D. And we get that if we look at angle A, the arc that A inscribes is going to be BD. And that's going to be from here to here, from B to D, but C is going to go from B to D the other way. 
So its intercepted arc is the other portion of the circle. So we end up uh, intercepting the whole circle between those two arcs. We know a circle has 360 degrees in it. So half of that is going to be 180. Uh, it works the exact same way for the other two sets of opposite angles. They intercept the whole circle. We can use the inscribed quadrilateral theorem to help us find measures of an angle. If we're looking for the measure of angle S, we know S and V, since they are opposite angles, need to add up to 180. So if angle V is 90, uh, then angle S must also be 90, since opposite angles are supplementary. We also know that U and T must add up to 180. So on that side, we're going to have 8x plus 4 plus 14x is going to equal 180. We can combine like terms. 22x plus 4 is going to equal 180. Subtract that 4. We know 22x is going to equal 176. And therefore, x is going to equal 8. But we are asked to find angle T. So we plug that 8 back in for x. 8 times 8 is going to be 64, plus 4 is going to be 68. An insignia is an emblem that signifies rank, achievement, membership, and so on. The insignia shown is a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. Find the measure of angle N. So we know, since N and L are opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral, they need to add up to 180. So 3x plus 12 uh, plus 12 plus 11x is going to equal 180. Combine like terms and subtract that 12. We know 14x is going to equal 168. We divide both sides by 14. And x is going to equal... 48. Find the value of x and y and find the measures of each of the angles of the quadrilateral. So now we know opposite angles in this quadrilateral are going to add up to 180. So 21y plus 3x is going to equal 180. 26y plus 2x is going to equal 180. That gives us a system of equations. We have two equations, two unknowns. We can use that to uh, solve for one of the variables. Uh, using the elimination method, we know we can multiply the top equation by negative 2, the bottom equation by 3. That's going to give us negative 42y minus 6x is going to equal negative 360. And we are going to have... 78y plus 6x is equal to 540. Combining those two equations, we're going to get 36y is equal to 180, so y is going to equal 5. We plug that in to one of our original equations, and we're going to get 105 plus 3x is equal to 180, plugging that back into the first equation. So then x is going to equal 25. We are also asked to find out the measure of each of those angles, so then we just plug in the 5 for y. So angle A is going to be 105. Angle D is going to be 130. Angle B is going to be 50, and angle C is going to be 75. That ends lecture 10.4.